Tabernacle and a very good evening to you all. When we talk about the importance of implementing the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, it's uh, very easy to see them as someone, someone else's agenda. A set of targets agreed to by the number of uh, by the member nations of the UN in far off New York that have little bearing on our day-to-day -day lives here in the Pacific. And that's uh, the importance of this exhibition that I have the pleasure to open tonight, that it brings home to all of us the relevance of these SDGs to everyone living in vulnerable parts of the world, such as Fiji, and their critical importance in sustaining all 7.5 billion people on planet Earth ensuring our survival, our very survival. I want to congratulate the organizers at uh, UNDP Pacific and urge as many Fijians as possible to come to the Fiji Museum to see it because uh, it transforms the 17 SDGs from words on a page, a bold statement of principles into compelling images to which we can all relate. Can I ask the um, the photographer to be here with us, Jason. Is Jason around here somewhere? Thank you, Jason. Please. Come on, man. Let everyone see you. Thank you. And these uh, images, uh, ladies and gentlemen, underline why the comprehensive plan of action the SDGs entail to improve the state of our world is so important for every Fijian. I had uh, the great privilege last month to be co-host with the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden of the World Ocean Conference in New York. This was a gathering of the nations of the world to put the spotlight on the importance of implementing SDG 14 to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, the seas and marine resources and to take urgent steps to combat the pollution and overfishing that is degrading our oceans and seas the world over and poses such a threat to our planet and the livelihoods and well-being of our people. It was a wonderful conference, not only because we achieved so much agreement on the need for decisive action, but uh, because as co-hosts, we brought the special Fijian Bula spirit to New York. Sorry. I just, want to, I just want you to see him, the gentleman that has been taking all the photographs. But as I said, uh, we brought the special Fijian Bula spirit to New York. And uh, to be able to hold a Yangona ceremony and Tambua presentation before the main podium of the UN General Assembly was a very special moment. Every Fijian in that great auditorium swelled with pride at the sight of the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, downing his billow in one hit <laughs> and also hearing him praise Fiji for its rich cultural tradition and its service to the world. Diplomats at the UN are usually uh, a pretty unsentimental bunch but a distinct wave of emotion also swept the vast room at the end of the conference when the entire Fijian delegation invited our Swedish partners to come forward and join us in the singing of the Isalei. The UN Auditorium has seen many memories and many memorable moments over the years. The Russian President Nikita Khrushchev banging his shoe uh, on the lectern, uh, Yasser Arafat waving his pistol in the air, Fidel Castro giving the longest speech in UN history, four hours and 48 minutes. I remember, I remember that speech. But those present had never seen dozens of Fijians singing their hearts out and others joining in with them. And it was a special moment that uh, none of us who witnessed it will ever forget. And of course, made us all very proud to be Fijian. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I'm telling you this story is that uh, SDG 13 also commits the global community to take urgent action to combat, combat climate change and its impacts. As you all know, Fiji has the privilege to be the incoming president of COP23, 
the ongoing UN negotiations on climate change. And we go to COP23 in Bonn in November. We will also be stamping the event with the Fijian Bula spirit, as well as the concept of Talano of the world coming together to discuss uh, the challenges we all face in the Pacific way in a spirit of genuine dialogue, cooperation, and mutual respect. As the incoming president, I can tell you that we are going to need all the collective strength we can master to keep these negotiations on track, to preserve the multilateral consensus uh, for the implementation of the Paris Agreement for decisive action on climate change that was agreed at the end of 2015. As you all know, President Trump has uh, very regrettably decided to withdraw from the Paris Agreement and has set the American government on a collision course with the rest of the world over this issue. I'm still hoping that the president will change his mind. And as I've said before, the door is always open for him to rejoin the rest of us in staying commit, uh, committed to the reductions in heat causing greenhouse gases we all agreed to in Paris. But in the meantime, those of us who remain committed and are leading this campaign, including me as incoming COP president, are going to stick together because we simply cannot afford to drop the ball on decisive climate action. Our very survival in the Pacific depends on it, as I've said so many times before. I was in Kandabu early on uh, Friday morning last when I got a call from uh, President Macron of uh, France. In that call, he gave me the heads up and sought my support for the announcement he made this past weekend of a global summit of uh, global leaders, which will be held in Paris on December the 12th to mark the second anniversary of the Paris Agreement. The, per the president invited me to be there, of course, and I will be, because it will be concentrating on one of, them, one of the issues that is of most concern to me as COP president, access to finance to do what vulnerable nations need to do to adapt to the terrifying new world that awaits us. To build our resilience to the rising sea levels, extreme weather events, and changes to agriculture caused by climate change. It will be just over three weeks after COP itself in Bonn, but I agree with President Macron that we need to keep up the momentum and the more we can focus global attention on this, the better. Because as the new French leader has said, there is no plan B other than decisive climate action because, because there is no planet B. I very much appreciated uh, President Macron uh, telling me that he fully supports me in the presidency of COP23 and that France fully supports Fiji as it builds a grand coalition of governments at all levels civil society, the private sector, and global citizens everywhere to keep this process on track. I regard the new French leader as a very important partner, and we hope to forge a much closer relationship with France in the lead up to COP and beyond. As incoming president of uh, COP23, I welcome the statement by the G20 leaders who have just met in Hamburg that uh, whatever the position of the US government, the Paris Agreement is irreversible and must be fully implemented. Pacific Island leaders meeting in Suva last week for our Climate Action Pacific Partnership event were looking for a strong statement from the G20 and we were pleased to get it. Because we cannot afford to give, uh, give any ground at all on our collective plan of action, which is to limit the global average temperature to well below two degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial uh, level and pursue efforts to keep it to 1.5 degrees. To do that, we need uh, net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 at the latest. So among other things, this means uh, every country is striving to emulate France leading in banning petrol and diesel powered vehicles after 2040. But ladies and gentlemen, as I keep saying, national governments alone cannot achieve the transformation needed. Which is why the grand coalition that Fiji is leading is so important. Because decisive climate action 
must also come from state and local governments throughout the world, from civil society, from business and citizens everywhere. We all have a role to play and we must play it. We must also put a human face on the impacts of climate change and the other SDGs. This is not some abstract thing that exists in charts and graphs. It is a real world challenge affecting the lives and livelihoods of people around the world. Which is why an exhibition like this is so important in highlighting the urgency of implementing all of the SDGs and especially SDG 13. Because as I've said repeatedly, no sustainable development is possible without decisive action of climate change. As I urge every Fijian to try uh, to see this exhibition, I also want to use this opportunity to announce a uh, photographic competition of my own, specifically related to climate change. At uh, COP23 in November, we want delegates to be confronted with powerful images of the impacts of climate change on our region and on our people. And so the incoming presidency is launching a competition for both professional and amateur photographers to submit photos that show the human and environmental impacts of climate change and how individuals and groups are mobilizing to counter this threat. To enter, participants must be over the age of 18 and reside in the Pacific. The full details, including the rules of the competition, are available on the COP23 website. And I encourage all those who are passionate about this issue and have an interest in photography to consider entering to help us tell our stories to the world. And uh, Your Excellencies, with that shameless plug of my, on my own, <laughs> shameless plug of my own, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I have the great pleasure to again thank the organizers, the organizers at the UNDP Pacific and formally open this exhibition on the 17 SDGs. Thank you and God bless you all.